Hi everyone, welcome to um, Super Bowl lessons uh, for executives and uh, entrepreneurs. Um, so welcome to the broadcast. I hope things are going really well for you in whatever part of the world that you're in. Uh, I'm going to give people a few minutes to chime in and say hello and then we'll get started. I've got 16 insights that I gained from uh, watching the Super Bowl yesterday. It was really fun. Disappointing, but really fun. <laughs> and I've got some great lessons to share for you. So I uh, would love to hear where you're calling in from. So if you want to type in, um, you know, where you are, that would be awesome. Uh, look forward to learning more about you. And if you're in a place where you can take notes, I would actually recommend that you do that. Because at the end, I'm going to ask you which of these 16 tips was your very uh, favorite. Hey there, you know what, I think I need to put my glasses on because I can't see <laughs> that tiny print. Uh, Dink Munch. Okay, welcome Dink Munch. Where are you coming in from? So here are the 16 <laughs> tips. Um, so the first one is have a plan. And, um, you know, at the very beginning of the game, there's a coin flip, and people get to decide uh, whether they're going to receive or whether they're going to kick off. And uh, Cam uh, elected to receive, is I think what I wrote down, although I thought they could, yeah, so they were, 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 he elected to receive. So the point here is, when you make decisions, you need to have a plan and an objective. So I am sure that he and the leadership and the team had all decided what their strategy was going to be uh, by receiving first. So if they receive first, then they're at least guaranteed at the beginning of the second half that they're going to get to kick off. Um, and uh, so you just want to know, whatever decision that you're making, that you have a plan for that. So let me just say, I am not a sports broadcaster. I love football. When I was in high school, I went to every football game my high school had. And I went to a lot of the college games. I've actually never been to a pro game, but I've watched a lot on TV and I, I really enjoy the game. But So please forgive me if I have any kind of technical errors in here because I was interpreting it from, you know, from my personal experience and not from me being a football expert. Um, but in any event, I think the lessons are still really useful for you. So, again, if you, uh, you know, let me know where you're calling in from and take some notes for um, the tips that you found to be your very favorite. So we're talking about having a plan. That's the first tip. Have a plan. So if you know that you're going to kick off or receive, you have to have a strategy for why that was the best option and what you're going to do. Uh, given that that's the option that you chose. So whatever decision you have. So you want to plan things. Plan every day. Plan your weeks. Plan your month. Plan your year. I used to work for a company um, that's now, I think, not in business anymore. It was a long time ago. Uh, but they were run by Masayoshi Son, who is one of the wealthiest men in the world and bought Sprint a couple of years ago. He bought Sprint. Now, he owns a lot of other things, but he bought Sprint. He owned the company that I uh, was part of. I was the HR executive there. And I heard that when he first got out of college, he didn't quite know what he wanted to do. And he sat and brainstormed for months, much to the chagrin of his parents and his fiance, because they wanted him to be earning money and get a job. And he was planning for what he wanted to have happen in the world. And he actually was working on a 100-year plan. A hundred years, a hundred years. So most of us don't plan that far out, but can you imagine what your life would be like if you were actually making a plan for what your legacy was going to be a hundred years from now? So have a plan. That's tip number one. Um, by the way, I am Loretta Love Huff. I'm a business coach, a professional speaker, and uh, a consultant. And I specialize in helping executives and entrepreneurs lead better so their teams rock and they and their teams make more money. So I'm all about people being really productive and happy in what they're doing and uh, effective at what they're up to and purposeful in what they're doing. So they're doing things that are really fun and enjoy enjoyable and purposeful for them. So tip number two is uh, say a little prayer. And if I, you know, when I say some of these tips, if you like them, you know, I always appreciate getting little hearts here. So say a little prayer. Uh, he also, Cam, okay, said a, a prayer uh, at the beginning of the game. And it reminded me several years ago, um, I woke up from a dream. And my husband had said something to this dream, which is actually what woke me up. And what he said was, uh, it was about prayer. And what he said was, a prayer is language that misaligns trouble. Now, that's kind of a strange sentence. Prayer is a language that misaligns trouble. 
But if you think about it, that's kind of what prayer does. It misaligns trouble. It interferes with any trouble that might be happening in your life. So, you know, it presumes when you're praying that you have some desire for something different and new in your life that's different than the current state that you're experiencing. You know, whether it's a health challenge for you or someone that you love or care about, or if it's a financial challenge or a challenge in a relationship, you know, there's something that you are yearning for. Hey, Grady, welcome. Something that you're yearning for. Um, and so as an executive or an entrepreneur, you probably have goals. You should have goals. If you don't have goals, you should have some goals. Uh, so have a plan for your business, your life, your career, your um, the legacy that you want to lead, and uh, have prayers for those. So your prayers might be much bigger than what you might actually be doing right now. Uh, and my prayer, if I because I was thinking about this when I was writing these tips the other day, my prayer is actually for... Uh, ending violence in the world. Now, I know that's probably not quite so realistic because we're human and, you know, there's going to be misalignment there. But that's my prayer, that the violence ends, that we actually begin to treat each other with uh, love and appreciation. So that's my prayer. <laughs> it's a big prayer. It may not actually happen, but that is what I want for the world, you know, more peace in the world. So, if, you know, if you want to share uh, one of your prayers, that would be lovely. So here's tip number three. Recover your own fumbles. You know, in life, things are going to go awry. You're going to make mistakes. I'm going to make mistakes. I've made mistakes. So, but you have to recover from that. So there was a Carolina uh, player who in the first quarter, you know, fumbled. I don't remember which one it was, but he fumbled the ball, but he got it back. He got the ball back. He recovered it. So, you know, if you're, if you've had a fumble in the past, don't run and hide from it. You know, get back, as I said, get back on the horse and do something again. Try something new. Try some. Try that same thing again. I was listening to a woman uh, this morning who is a really successful entrepreneur and charges lots of money for her coaching programs. But she was talking about having gone to um, a seashore and as you know, as an experience, she wanted to dive off of this huge cliff. And even though she said she was a master lifeguard and um, a swimmer, she was petrified of jump, jumping off this cliff and stayed there for a very long time until this little girl came up to her and talked about fear. And then she got, um, you know, kind of what she needed to, to jump off that cliff. So recover from your fumbles, you know, and step out. Tip number four is maintain your cool. Um, so uh, one of the Denver Broncos, Andre Caldwell, uh, drew a major penalty because he was in his whole celebrating I'm bad routine and, you know, took off his helmet at the sideline and was yelling at somebody about something. I don't even remember what it was. But he got a penalty for that, and it cost them a lot. Um, so it was a 15-yard penalty, and he, uh, he didn't get thrown out of the game, but he caused the team to lose a lot of yards because he was in his ego um, – celebrating too much and trying to, you know, dog somebody else out. So maintain your cool. So even when things go really well or even if things go not so well, you want to still maintain <laughs> your cool. Um, so tip number five. So and if you're getting this, you know, tap on the screen there. So play your position. Do your job really well. Um, so there was a mid-linebacker who ran through a – so I remember that there was a, this huge hole in the line, and this linebacker ran right through it and sacked Cam like there was nobody protecting him. There was this huge gaping hole. So his team, whoever was assigned to cover that hole, they had kind of missed their clues or they went off and did something else, but do your position. Whatever your position is, do that and do that really well. So whether you're, you know, the boss of the company or the marketing person or the salesperson, you know what your responsibilities are and if you don't find out. <clears throat> but do that, <coughs> excuse me, and do it well. Um, so number six is play by the rules and pay attention. So in football, there are lots of rules. Um, and one of the Broncos um, got caught with a face mask um, penalty. So, you know, you're not supposed to grab onto somebody's mask, but maybe in the heat of the game you forget, or maybe you think you're going to get away with it. Um, but don't do that. <laughs> don't. Um, now, I don't want to say that you shouldn't ever step out of the kind of what's normal, because that is 
often where a lot of innovation happens, but don't break rules that you don't necessarily need to, um, that will cause you to have problems uh, in your life. So, you know, kind of know what the boundaries are, challenge them, because as I said, that is where a lot of miracles happen, uh, but don't uh, just blatantly break the rules, because that's going to cause you more problems and more things to have to clean up than if you didn't. Um, the second one, actually, the seventh tip actually came from uh, one of the Super Bowl commercials. Now, I was a little underwhelmed. I don't know if you were. I was a little underwhelmed with all the commercials. Like, I didn't really walk away thinking, boy, that one was really awesome. But this one had a message that I thought was really good. And it was the Steve Tyler uh, portrait that was screaming, dream on. And as an entrepreneur and an executive, I think it's really important for us to have dreams and to be looking out at the future and trying to decide what it is that we want to make happen in the world, what we want to bring to the world that's different than what's happening right now. So do dream on, have really big dreams, because they will motivate you and inspire you and help you accomplish um, more than you would that if you were just, um, you know, waking up every day and doing the same old, same old, same old every day. So dream really big. Uh, so tip number eight, um, and actually I'm kind of curious, like what are you dreaming about? What's your dream? Um, so don't give up. Tip number eight is don't give up. So uh, Cam had fumbled the ball at some point near the end of the fourth quarter. Not very much time left. I think there were like four minutes left. And so he fumbles the ball. There's this huge crowd of um, Broncos around. And he looked down at where the ball was, and he didn't do anything. And I thought, well, okay, he could have gone for it. He could have done something. He didn't do anything. So I don't know if he froze or if he decided there were too many of them around and he was not going to get to it, and so he gave up. Or he thought, maybe I could get to it, but I might get hurt, and he didn't. But don't give up. You know, even when things look like they may not turn out, don't. Uh, Push that one extra mile. Do one extra thing um, because you just never know. <laughs> you know, if you don't try, you know it's not going to turn out. Um, so point number nine is pay attention. Don't presume that things are going to go some particular way. So there was a point when Carolina was punting the ball, uh, and I think they assumed that the Bronco player who was receiving it was going to call for a fair catch. And then he didn't. <laughs> and because they were all kind of assuming there was going to be like a fair catch call, nobody was like rushing up to get to the guy. And when he caught the ball and ran for it, he got a whole lot of yards, 61 yards. It was the longest run of the game. So uh, pay attention and don't make presumptions about things. Uh, tip number 10 is do your job. <laughs> so I wrote down, uh, catch the darn ball. It's not what I wrote down, but I'm not going to say it. So catch the darn ball and then keep the darn ball. Um, so there was someone who made, there was a you know pass that was thrown and there was a very easy catch that could have been made, but it got missed. Um, and then in another case, uh, one of the Broncos was tackling someone and actually knocked the ball out of the hands of the carrier uh, by hitting the ball with his helmet. And just knocked it out and uh, it actually forced a, a, a fumble, which they were then able to, Denver was able to recover. Um, so, you know, catch the ball, keep the ball. So what uh, impact does that have for you? So stay focused on what it is that you're doing. Um, don't get lazy. Don't get complacent, uh, keep moving forward and do your job, basically. <laughs> so uh, tip number 11 uh, is, let's see, even when things are looking great, don't give up. So that's the point. And that's kind of related to the last one. Even when things are looking great, don't give up. So you want to keep moving forward, keep staying focused on what it is that you're doing. Tip number 12 is keep running. Um, so Anderson broke out a, a bunch of tackles um, and got a lot of yards and a fourth down for Denver. So he kept running, just kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going. Uh, so when you run into a roadblock, don't give up. Just don't, don't assume that when things aren't going well, 
that, oh, well, they're just not ever going to go well. So just keep going. When you create that dream for yourself, stay focused on that and keep moving forward towards that dream. So number 13 is keep your eyes open for opportunity and be ready. Uh, so there was um, a, a hand, uh, oh, yeah. so DeMarcus, I think, uh, completed a one-hand interception. One hand, jumped up, grabbed the thing with his one hand. It was a great interception, uh, and he gained even more yards. Denver was like, you know, kicking their butt by then. Um, so you just never know when a window of opportunity is going to open up. So you got to keep your eyes open, be ready, always be looking for uh, what is, you know, what's the opportunity that I could step into. So here's an opportunity that I encountered several years ago. Um, I got called by Fox 10 News, the local station here, and they were looking for someone to speak on New Year's resolutions. And they'd actually contacted, I'm part of the National Speakers Association in Arizona. I'm actually the president of the Arizona chapter now, but back then I was just a member. So they called me and they said, you know, we've called a number of people from the National Speakers Association because we thought they'd be really good at this, talking about New Year's resolutions. And it was right around the Christmas holiday, and so a lot of people were out of town. And I was the first one that they reached. So this was really an opportunity, you know, that I wasn't expecting. Um, and as a result of that, you know, I, I, so they asked me, do you want to be on TV? And I thought my first thing was, <coughs> really? But then I thought, say yes, say yes. So I said yes, and I got prepared. And... Um, we talked about resolutions. They actually loved the, the information that I shared and the way that I did that. So they invited me back for like five years to talk about New Year's resolutions. So you never know when you get an opportunity, go for it. Step into it. Even if it seems like way too big and way too challenging and, oh, my God, I don't know if I can do that, step up and try. It'll be worth the effort. So uh, tip number 14 is keep your cool. Uh, so Camel's down 13 to 7. You know, at the end of the second quarter, uh, he was backed up, you know, almost in the end zone about to get, uh, you know, not sacked again, but he almost did get sacked, uh, but he was able to get off this really long pass. Thank goodness. Um, and so even when it looks really bad, keep your cool, stay focused on your goal. Um, I was years ago, I was, I used to work for Apple and at one point we had a, an offsite with a lot of uh, regional people from kind of all over, you know, the region that we were in. And there was a golf um, tournament, which and I didn't play that much golf, so I didn't get into that. And there was a tennis tournament. And I, decide, I decided that I was going to win. I decided I was going to win. I didn't know any of the other players. I didn't know how good they were, but I decided I was going to win. I saw the tennis trophies first, second, and third place, and I went and I looked at them, and I bonded with them, and I said, oh, there's the first trace place trophy. That's going to be mine, <laughs> and I looked at it like several times throughout the day. I'm going to win that. Then it was time for the tournament, and I, you know, so I won the first couple of matches, and then the final match, which was going to determine who was in first place and who was in second place, and I knew I was going to win, um, I just kept focused and I kept in my mind, I'm winning this trophy. I'm winning this trophy. So it kept me focused on the game. It kept me calm and purposeful and not nervous and anxious because I just knew I was going to win. And I eventually actually did win. And someone said, they were watching the tournament, and he said, you know, you were, like, down a lot of points. <laughs> and at any point, you could have, like, missed one of them and, and be knocked out. But I was so clear and so focused that I was going to win that I did. So um, keep your cool, be clear about what your goal is, and just stay focused. So, you know, you've probably had some instances like that, too, when you were really clear about something turning out, and it turned out that way because you were really clear. So make sure that you, you know, keep that as a kind of a strategy and a way that you operate. Um, so here, number 15 is come out fighting. So after halftime, still down 13 to 7, uh, a very long pass got thrown. So, you know, it was a little bit late at that point. But you want to continue to focus on your goal, regardless of what the circumstances are, regardless of how it looks. Stay focused on your goal and come out fighting. Uh, so number 16 is be gracious. So um, Pey Peyton Manning um, was very gracious at the end. You know, applauded, 
uh, the Carolina um, Panthers for their great effort and a great season. It was just very, very gracious. So you don't need to gloat when you win. Uh, just be gracious about it. People will appreciate it much more, and it'll leave you in much better standing. So my question to you guys is, you know, are you, do you think he's going to retire? Is he announcing? I, don't, I haven't watched the news today, so he may already have retired. I don't really know. But what do you think? Do you think he's going to retire or not? Okay, he won like the big game and he's been thinking about, you know, retiring and this might be the really good time to go out as the big winner of the Super Bowl. So what do you think? Retiring or not? So which of these tips were your favorites? So we've got 16 of them. I'm not going to review them all right now, but would love to, you know, see from you what you were, um, you know, which ones you resonated with, which ones you're going to like take away and do something with. So uh, thank you for being here. You know, if you found this really helpful, uh, follow me on Periscope, um, follow me on Twitter, um, tell your friends, share this uh, replay link with your buddies so they can get inspired and get their week started off on a great note too. Uh, and thank you so much for your attention and your participation. And I'll talk with you again soon. Take care.